repeat the code of honor. I will not lie. I will not lie. I will not cheat. I will not cheat. I will not steal. I will not steal. I will not fight. I will not fight. What's the matter with you? Speak. I will not fight. Louder. I will not fight. And I will obey the law. I will obey the law. Louder. I didn't hear you louder. I will obey the law. Louder! I will obey the law. Come on, follow me. Hey, wait a minute. I'll be damned if it ain't my old buddy Lepke. Good to see you out. A year. What's a year? What'd your old lady say? Nothing. I don't hear from her anymore. She went away somewhere, I don't know, Colorado. I'm on my own now. It's two of us. So, go around. Everything all right? Things are good. This war in the old country is making people over here a lot richer. So, things are good. Ready for another heist? Yeah, I'm. Tonight. Toes up to the line. Okay, Lepke. Let's hear you. I will not lie. I will not cheat. I will not steal. I will not fight. I will obey the law, okay? Me. My name's Louis Buchholz. I used to live here. Third floor, Lepke, Lepkeler, remember? 
sure. I remember. How are you? Okay. How you been? Fine. Nice to see you. I heard your mother and the girls wound up in Colorado. Oh, yeah, right. Where have you been? Oh, I've been around. What can I do for you? Well, uh, you got a room? Well, I ain't got nothing for nothing. Not like him in them old well, days. Well, I'm gonna pay you. I'm gonna pay you. In advance. Uh, you got any money? Mrs. Shea, I just got into town. I'm, I'm kind of broke. Give me a week, will you? Come on, what do you say? Old times sake. Come on. Ah, uh, out. Thanks. Uh, Thanks. I don't know. Oh. It don't look as nice as it should. They just moved out last night, but I'll clean it tomorrow. Well, Merry Christmas. What? Merry Christmas. Yeah, right, Merry Christmas. Who's the nice gift for you, girl? For me. Oh, you bought yourself a present. That's nice. Good night. Good night. Left. How are you? Okay, okay. Nice to see you. Excuse us for a minute, will you? You got a minute? Come here. Sure. Hey, love, it's good to see you. How you been? <laughs> hey, you look terrific. I've been treating you all right, huh? Cut the crap. Okay, what is it? I can use some money. You got it. You ain't got enough there. I want some action. Who are you working for? Augie Augie. Little Augie. Oh, yeah, right. I heard about him up in the joint. What's his angle? Strike breaking, protection, you know, that kind of bullshit. Mm, can you deal me in? You got it. Tomorrow. Tomorrow you meet little Augie. Now. Okay, we're on strike. Everyone go home. Come on, get out of here. Get out of here! Wait! Wait. It was all agreed. I, I gave the raise. Everyone is happy. Tell these men, Silverman. Yes, we're happy. They're not happy, Mr. Stern. Come on, go home! Out of here! Get out! Get going! Get out of here! Come on! Wait! Wait! Wait. Wait. I'll settle it! Go, go! But what was the problem, Mr. Organ? I, I paid last month. You're supposed to pay every week, Mr. Stern. We are your partners, remember? 35% is too much. I can't afford it, Mr. Ogg. From now on, it's 50%, and you got to afford it. <laughs> I don't have it, I'm telling you. Then you're going to get it. No, I won't pay. I'm telling you, you're going to pay. No! Ah! Why'd you have to kill him? Now we'll get nothing. When are you going to start using your brains to study your kishkas? Now everybody in the neighborhood is going to pay. What was that again? You want me to do what? Give him back the money. Why, for God's sake? Look, the guy's in politics. He's thick with the unions. We do him a favor, he's going to do us a favor. Shut up with your crap. Strike ends tomorrow, Lepke. I say it's a big mistake. 50,000 bucks is a mistake. You're out of your mind. I run this joint. 
And don't you forget it. Anybody else want to hear to say? Anybody else want to say something? Uh, Reuben? Hey, Tannenbaum, how about you, babe? Nothing wrong, huh? Mm-hmm. I figured it. Well, I think Lemke's right. You aren't here to think, Luciano. Remember that. Okay, let's go. All right, I said, let's go! Maybe if little Augie wasn't around, huh? Nobody talks to little Augie that way. He's gonna set you up for a hit. How long we've we been working for him? Oh, a couple of years. Lake's diamond in this hall. Where there's legs, Diamond, there's all the organ. No, 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 no. Taxi! Taxi! Come on! Nice and easy. Taxi! It's amazing what money will do. All the witnesses lost their memories. That ain't good enough. I want them all out of the way. Okay, so I'll kill them off for you. No, we run a clean business. You know, you're driving me crazy, Lepke. Is it yes or is it no? Yes and no. Call Brooklyn, get Mendy on it. Mendy, you want to see Mendy? No, I don't want to see Mendy. So I'll see him. No, I don't want you to see Mendy. I want you to see Reuben. Reuben? Reuben will tell Schwartz, and Schwartz will get the message to Mendy. Mendy. Reuben and Schwartz and Mendy. Two contracts. Three. Keep the oh, thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Nice to have you with us. Hey, uh, Matt. Yes, sir. Got a light? Yes, I do. You bet I do. Ah. It's a rough night. Not nearly as rough as last night, sir. Oh, really? What happened? Better shoot out here. One of my best customers, right against the wall. Right. Right. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. North and South America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. This is Walter Winchell. Another murder. A second witness to the gangland slaying of little Augie Organ. Underworld character Legs Diamond was found this morning floating off Coney Island Beach with an ice pick in his heart. First came the doorman of the Topsy Turvy Club, now Diamond. Can it be a coincidence that the latest victims were all witnesses to Augie Organ's murder? It is rumored that Organ's gang has split up between followers of Lucky Luciano and one Mr. Louis Bookhalter, alias Lepke, and his Brooklyn-based mob. Both Lepke and Luciano and their henchmen are being questioned by the district attorney in connection with these brutal murders. Police are also searching for a third witness, an unidentified young lady seen frequently in the company. Is it true that you and Mr. Luciano are splitting up now that Organ's dead? 
Well, will you take over as head man of your organization now, Mr. Lepke? My board of directors hasn't decided that. Yet. Well, how do you feel about Mr. Luciano? Uh, Mr. Luciano and I are in different lines of work. Right, uh, Mr. Luciano? Wow, well, well, what's the question? Uh, we're in different lines of work, you and me. Well, of course we are. What do you people ask? <laughs> what do you... <laughs> Well, I haven't decided yet. Hey, Lewis, wouldn't have to need a lawyer, would you? Now, why would I need a lawyer? The charges against me were dismissed. Yeah. Well, I just thought I'd ask for old times' sake, Lewis. Name's Lepke. Don't forget it. Lepke. Spell it right. Wait a minute. Where do I know you from? Get out of here. Huh? My name is Robert Kane. We used to live on the same street when we were kids. Shapiro, you remember me? You used to call me Cohen, Lewis. Cohen? You remember Cohen? Oh, Cone? yeah, right, Cohen, huh? Well, look at you, a big-time macher now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> a lawyer. Well, keep it up, kid. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is a surprise. Sit down, please. I, uh, wish I had a, uh, drink or something to offer you. Mm, I wish I had an office to work in. Yeah. Sit down. Right. What can I do for you? Are you a good lawyer? A man with your business interests, yeah. Uh, you must have a whole team of lawyers. True. But all the guys working for me, they're Ghanifs. I can't trust any of them. You're clean. Obviously. Look, I'd like to pay you to watch after my affairs, you know? Look after these guys. I need somebody that I can depend on, somebody that I can trust. What do you say? Can I think it over for a while? How much time do you need? <laughs> you haven't changed at all, Lewis. How much time do you need? <clears throat> what is it? There's a young lady out here to see the counselor. You've got business. You can't keep business waiting. Um, I'll just be a minute, Bernice, okay? I don't mind waiting. Oh, we were just leaving. Shapiro, get the car. Mm. Are you sure you're finished? Oh, yes, absolutely. So, uh, come right in, please. Well, don't work too hard, Cohen. You look at me as if you know me, do you? Do I? Um, Lewis, I'd like you to meet, um, Bernice Greenbaum. Bernice, I'd like you to meet Louis Buchalter uh, is an old friend. Well, Bobby's known me all my life. How, how come we never met? Um, I was away a lot. Oh, at, at college? Well, sort of, yeah. Well, I got a good education. <clears throat> so I hear from you, right? Yeah, right. See you around. Never been in a joint like this before? Pop always wants to know where I'm going. He wouldn't believe it if he could see it. I mean, a place with your own key and... I'll give you a key to the world if you want. <laughs> I'll take you to places that your papa wouldn't even believe. I'll take you to the top. Miami Beach. Hollywood. How would you like that? You don't have to do all that for me. I'm happy just getting out of Brooklyn once in a while. Albert, your taste is getting better. Thanks. Anything else you want? Introduce me to your friend. I'm Albert Anastasia. Nice to meet you, Mr. Anastasia. 
Italian? Yes, but the food is good, and so are the manners. Come on, Bernice, we're leaving. No, don't go. Philip, a bottle of Chateau Margo for them, please. Where are you going, Lepke? Lepke, what is it, something I said? What's the matter? You know, you join a fancy private club like this, you think you keep riffraff like that out of here. Here. I'm awfully sorry, sir. We tried. These days, you never know who's going to have a key to your private club. Oh, I thought he was a friend of yours. My friend. I need him like a lochen cup. Give me that cup. I never want you to know anyone like him. Why? Never mind. How's David? David? Mm-hmm. How did you find out about him? known anybody that's been up the river? Up the river? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Prison. Lou, everyone has a past. I thought we were planning our future. Future. Well, what did he say? Oh, Papa's so orthodox. He wants me to wait a while longer. Your husband's been dead over a year now. Isn't that long enough? Well, I think so. Oh. Lou, there's only one way to do it. You're going to have to come to my house and formally ask Papa for my hand. Ask for your hand? Yeah. It'd be worse than talking to Lucky Luciano, I tell Who? you. Who? Uh, no, 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 just somebody I know. Bernice? Okay, I'll do it. Yeah. You set it up with your father. I'll come by and talk to him anytime you want, anytime he wants. I don't know what there is about you. It scares me, but I think I'd go with you even if Papa said no. Oh, please, come in. Thank you. Papa's waiting for you. I bet he is. Pardon? <laughs> you must be Bernice's uh, beautiful mother. Oh. Yes. So nice to meet you. Oh. Oh, hello, David. Hi. Got a little present for you. Want to know what it is? What? It's a red fire engine. A red fire engine? Yeah. David! <laughs> so, Mr. Buchholter... You love my daughter. Uh-huh. You know, she was married once before. Yes, I know. It was a bad marriage. Bad, bad. That man came here just like you did. I made a big mistake. You follow my meaning? You may love my daughter, Mr. Buchholter. She will never love her as much as I do. You understand? Yes, I do. I don't want it should happen again. It's not going to happen again. Oh, what more is there? Ask me. Ask you what? For my daughter's hand in marriage. I want things should be kosher, correct. You understand? Yeah, right. Um, Mr. Meyer, I... Stand up. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Meyer, may I ask you for your daughter's hand in marriage? Okay, good. Granted. You mean you give me your consent? I just said so, didn't I? 
You want me I should spell it out for oh, you? No, it's okay. Oh, another thing. Yes. I want the ceremony should be in shul. Shul? You never been in one? Uh, well, when I was a kid, I... Uh... Oy, ach, vey. A shul's a synagogue. Uh, uh, You've never been in a synagogue. Oh, I... yes, yes, when I was a kid, I... Good, good. Yes, yes I want the marriage should be really under rabbinical law. Hmm. You understand me? Absolutely, sir. Mazel tov, young man. Mazel tov. Mazel tov. Enterprises, I like it then. <laughs> so you work for the Enterprises, huh? It's good. Well, Albert, Luciano. Hi, Louis. Good to see you. Oh, it's very nice, very nice. <laughs> Hello, Mike. Charlie, look. How are you? Right. Bugsy, Hi. good to see you. And the butcher. Yeah. <laughs> the butcher, he comes to a meeting. Oh, yeah. Good. Hello, Dad. Oh, sure. Good, Dad. How are you? Hey, come here, Mark, Estella. Ah, oh, molto bene, grazie. Estella, tu come Gino. Ciao, Luciano, come stai? Yeah. <laughs> nice arrival, <work>, eh? <laughs> All right, gentlemen, first on the agenda is Thomas E. Dewey. Our member, Dutch Schultz, uh, has raised a few questions about Dewey, and he has a few uh, pertinent remarks about the subject. So, uh, Dutch, please. Ever since this guy Dewey came to New York, he's given me nothing but problems. I'm unhappy. My boys are unhappy, and they can't work. Right, Harry? Right. Now, I say we do something about him. Yeah, well, what do you got in mind? Kill a son of a bitch. <laughs> Dutch, you can't kill the DA and get away with it. Why not? That dirty son of a bitch, everywhere he goes, he's saying he's going to clean up New York. He's treating us like a piece of shit. Listen, Dewey is a political man. He's an ambitious man. So let's use him. Use him? What's the matter with you? Can't you see that? He's using us, right? Right. So we buy him. You can't buy Dewey. Anybody can be bought. We just don't know his price yet. What do you think, Judge? Uh, I think we ought to put it to a vote. That's right. Listen up. All right. All those who go with uh, Schultz, raise your hands. 4-4. Four, four. Right. Those against? Four apiece. How about you, Judge? Klepke's always for the hit. Killing Dewey would be bad for business. <laughs> Bullshit! You guys will go with me on this. I'll do it myself. Come on, let's go. Hey, what do we vote about? I don't know what you vote about. We're part of a syndicate, you know. Good, you be a syndicate. Me, I'm gonna kill the little bastard. All right. Bullshit. Hey, are we a syndicate or aren't we a syndicate? I move we take steps to protect Dewey. Good, that huh? meeting was a bunch of bullshit as far as I concerned. And a little bastard is going down the tubes tomorrow. Boy, That's what I'm telling you. Yeah, okay. Give it a check. Harry, you like the food, huh? Oh, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 
wonderful. You play good, you know, you play good. Very good. Play good huh? yeah. Give me some money. Come on, you cheap bastard. Give me the money. Buy your kids a toy. <laughs> Thou art consecrated. Thou art consecrated. Unto me. Unto me. With this ring. With this ring. According to the laws. According to the laws. Of Moses. Of Moses. And Israel. And Israel. And now that you have spoken the words and performed the rites which unite your lives, I do hereby in conformity with the faith of Israel and the laws of the state of New York declare your marriage to be valid and binding. And I pronounce you to be husband and wife before God and man. Uh, at the conclusion of the ceremony, you please break this glass to commemorate the destruction of Jerusalem. With your right foot, please. Yes. <laughs> Charlie, Albert. Hello, Louie. Hello, Mrs. Bookalter. How are you? <laughs> I'm marvelous. It's a marvelous day. Won't you come in? Why, certainly. What do you think, Albert? Sure, why not? Excuse me. I'm looking for you, Bernice. It's our dance. big happy family in the syndicate. I thought maybe you'd send us an invite. What's matter? You like a tired? I thought a heap wedding would uh, bore you. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe, maybe it will. Huh? Right. Well, come on in. Let me take your coats, huh? Give me a hat. Right. Albert, Charlie. What do you think? Have a drink. Sure, we'll have a little fun. Come on. <laughs> Mrs. Bookhalter, can I have this dance, please? Well, I, I don't know. Hello. Huh? That's. <laughs> Maybe pretty soon a couple bambinos. <laughs> oh. 
How about Albert, huh? <laughs> oh, Mr. Bocconjo, let me announce you. Well, 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 this is certainly a beautiful spot you got here. My money does wonders. Lewis, thanks for coming. That's okay. Robert, what do you got on your mind? Look, I don't have to tell you how much I appreciate everything you've done for me. And you know how much I love you and Bernice. Yeah, I know. You know, this is getting to sound more serious. So, what do you want? Sit down. I want to go to Washington. You've been subpoenaed? No. I've been offered a job in the Justice Department. The Justice Department? You're kidding. You want to be a cop? No, I'll be working in the legal department. That's still a cop. Hey, I hope you don't come running after me. Lewis, I'm asking you to let me go. I got one life to live, and I just want to see if I can make it on my own. That's all. Hey, look, you'll visit me in Washington. It's not that far from New York. You bring Bernice and David Wasserhaus. Well, <laughs> visit what? Your house, your office? It's gonna be shit. You think that bastard Hoover's gonna pay you as much money as I've been paying you? Is that what you're after, more money? I'll give you more money. What, are you trying to bribe me, Lewis? I don't like remarks like that, Kyle. Oh, come on, come on now. You know I was only joking. What kind of work are you gonna be doing in Washington? Well, it looks like I'm gonna be in narcotics. Narcotics? Excellent. Wonderful. Lewis, I hope you understand. Always remember you got a friend in New York City. Good night, honey. I love you. What's this one for? That's uh, because you get more beautiful every year. Thank you. Yes. Bernice. Mm -hmm. Bernice. Oh, there's um, Mr. Rubin waiting for you in the living room. Max? Here? Uh, give us uh, five minutes, will you? Fix me some jello. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. God damn it. How many times have I told you not to come to my house, huh? Sorry, boss. It's an emergency. What is it? We need your signature on this contract to make it valid. Give me a minute to read it. Settle it, right? Yeah, the bakery truckers local have agreed. Uh, we get a penny for every loaf of bread they deliver. A penny a loaf? There are seven million people living in this city, and they all eat bread. I figure our cut will come to about $30,000 a week. Yeah, well, when you put it that way. All right. Max, don't come to my house again. Oh, uh, Bernice, I'll get it. All right, raise them. What is it, Lou? Who are these men? These are detectives without a search warrant. Well, what are they doing here? Who's she? My wife. Would you mind waiting in any other room, lady? Come on. Take your hey. hands off. All right, raise them. Bert, frisk him. My lawyer's going to sue the shit out of you. If you don't like it, file a complaint. Well? He's clean. You sure? I'm sure. All right, let's go. Hey, Frank. Huh? Why don't we nail him with a vagrancy charge? The guy's got millions. He may not have any cash in the house. This enough for you. Good night. Bernice, dear, it's, it's all right now, dear. They've gone. Everything's Why, all right. Lou? Well, it was a case of mistaken identity. That's all, my dear. Those men. Yes. If they're policemen, they should be 
punished or, or reprimanded or something. Oh, oh, they will be, dear. Believe me, I'm going to call my attorney first thing in the morning. <clears throat> I'm going. Hey. What the hell was the rush you coming here? I should really get you killed. Look, boss, I can explain... Excuse me for a minute, Bernice. Somebody else was manipulating our bread deal. Who? Oh, give me names or shut your mouth. Maybe Joe Rosen. He's just a trucker, but he's big in the union. All right, Max. Joe Rosen. I want you to drive that son of a bitch out of the union. And then I want you to keep an eye on that bastard. And if I should ever forget that name, you remind me. Now get the hell out of here. Good! Bon appetit. Greenberg downstairs. Yeah, right. That Feldman owes me a favor. I don't want to check those books anyway. I'm just telling the slice is 30% now, that's all. What the hell was that? Someone know we was coming? Yeah. Deal! Deal! Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. I'm going to get on board. I'm going to get on board. Hey, the guy in a black suit, that Gino, Luciano's man. The election's moving in on us. <laughs> I paid you already, didn't I? Why? I can't pay those wops too. Tomorrow the Irish will come. So the hell would you take everything? Kill me already! Garrah. That wop Gino. Yeah. Bump him off. <laughs> Demi più, Gino. Oh, abbiamo divertiti molti. Era una bella storia. Okay, I'll call you back. Albert, what the hell is the matter with you? What are you doing horning in on the Lepkids' protection territory? You want this whole city to blow wide open? It was the big shot from the Union. What big shot? Rosen, he came to me. He said Lepke's deal is dead, and he needed protection. And there's a lot of money in protection. A lot of money? It's a shit of money. When are you going to get in your thicker head that Lepke is in a protection? It protects the bakers, it protects the garment. That's a, his a territory. We're part of a syndicate now. The board of directors told us so, and we agreed. Lepke's a sore. Lepke is a goddamn sore. Lepke's too damn grabby. He's a too grabby, huh? I have promised the Lepke that if he stays in his backyard, we will stay in our backyard. We got the waterfront. We got the prostitute. And that smart kike is making all the money. All the money, all the money is in a dope. What's the matter with you? I got a million dollar deal all over the country in a dope. You're dealing in a couple of loaves of bread for a couple of pennies? Dope, dope is what a future is. Dope. We got it in spades. Mr. Chang, you got a deal. The deal's on. I can't figure you out, Lip. I mean, you got it good. What the hell are you pushing for? Where the hell is it going to get you? The top of the heap. Miles above them Italian Ganifs. I tell you, you don't know what good is yet. Ah. Uh. By the way, you're uh, taking a boat to Shanghai. Shanghai? Yeah, and you're taking Schwartz with you. Schwartz, me. Shanghai. Where the hell is Shanghai? China. China. Shanghai, me, Schwartz. 
the hell do you think I am? This wop, uh, Christopher Columbus? That's Napoleon Putz. Napoleon Putz. Oh, by the way, you're leaving tonight. <coughs> bon voyage. <laughs> Hey, he doesn't speak English. Uh, show him the letter. Are you kidding? I don't even know if that's Lin Fu. And besides, the letter is in English. Huh? I think he wants the letter. Oh. Letter for Lin Fu in English. English? English. Don't be a son of a bitch. He reads English. Need a pang queen duck. Mo gao yik. I think he wants the money. Oh, no. <laughs> First, you give me the merchandise. And then I give you the money. The young man paying what tiny you for cow lo, bong an bo for cow. Now what? I think you better give him the money. Are you kidding? It's 150 grand. Look, I don't trust you, you son of a bitch. I want to put a hole in your head. Now you give me that merchandise, you cockamamie Chinese. What is Jung Gom Jung Pao? Ge? This side look too fat. Ge? What are you smiling for? This is a 45. I can blow your head off with this. What do you want? Look who's here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a, a, a toy. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> I uh, better give you the money. Knows how to go down at the uh, pier. No trouble at all, boss. Schwartz, the customs? They were drooling. They want more. <laughs> if they want more, we'll give them more. This was a cheap investment. But looks like baby powder. I told you we spent too much money for this garbage. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Mr. Lefke, this baby powder is going to get you a cool million on the street. Please, Mr. King, go right in. Thank you. Robert Kane. Mr. Dewey. Nice to have you with us in New York. Thank you. It's good to be back. Have a seat, please. Mr. Hoover tells me you were one of his best men. Really? And I understand you're an expert at narcotics. I've worked at it a lot. I could use a good man like you. By the way, sir, sorry about the election. Oh, they were right. Good man never wins the first time out anyhow, I understand. But seriously, Kane. I'm not the governor now, but I'm still the district attorney. And I aim to clean out the rackets of this city by every means available. And you can help me. Well, I'll do my best. Bobby! Oh. Hello, Bernice. <gasps> it's so good to see you. It's good to see you, too. But it's been too long. I know. 
Who is it, Bernice? A surprise. Well, <laughs> if it isn't a big man from the FBI. Well, don't just stand there. Come on in. Hello, Lou. Hello, Robert. Well, when are you going to take over from Hoover? I'm back in New York. I'm with Dewey now. Is that so? Hmm. Well, how is it you don't come and visit your loved ones? I mean, where you been hiding? Actually, I was uh, hoping I'd get a chance to talk to Lou for a few minutes. I'll make some coffee. No. I was going to take my evening constitutional anyway. Shall we go? Bobby, now that uh, you're back in New York, I hope we'll be getting together. Yeah, I hope so, too. What's your problem? Something we heard worried me. Who's we? Dewey's in the picture now. Dewey, huh? Yeah. Lewis, are you and Dope? The junkie dropped your name. I don't deal in dope. You know me better than that. I'm glad to hear it. I'd hate it if they came after you. Maybe you'd get to like it. I wouldn't. Come on, there's more to it than just that. There's Benice, your son. Hey, look, counselor, don't grate me. Leave my family out of this. All right. Goodbye. Boss! What do you want? The feds. They're here. They're at the front door. Let him in. But you can't. Let him in. Open it up. Uh, what do you want? Mr. Bookhalter, please. Jack Lansing, United States Attorney's Office. You come with me. Mr. Lewis Bookhalter? That's it. Jack Lansing, United States Attorney's Office. I have a warrant for your arrest. What's it for, Sonny? The federal grand jury has returned two antitrust indictments against you, Mr. Bookhalter. You're under arrest. If you come with me, please. Antitrust? What the hell is an antitrust? It's a gimmick. It's a new gimmick. It's nothing but a joke. Yeah, I'm laughing already. Call Bernice. Tell her I'm going to be a little late for dinner. Hey, Garab, call our lawyers. Tannenbaum, for Christ's sake, will you stop pacing? You drive me crazy. Where is he already? He'll be here. Don't worry. It's 7 o'clock. He ain't never been so late. You want a bagel? Sit down and shut up. Well, is there any news? No, have a bagel. Thanks. Like you said, it was a joke, right? This ain't no joke. It's no joke? What do you mean? I'm out on bail. Bail? Yeah, bail. Well, how long will it take to get to court? Two weeks. Two weeks? Geez, that's no time at all. That's long enough. I'm fed up. Some son of a bitch has been talking. Who's been talking? Who's been talking? Uh, Rosen. Joe Rosen. He's been saying all over town that he's going to see the hotshot DA, Dewey. Rosen, Rosen, Rosen. I don't know no Rosen. Who the hell is Rosen? Don't you remember the bread deal? Rosen's the baker that crossed us. You told me to ease him out of the union. I did, and he saw. What is he doing now? Well, he's got a little newsstand in a candy store over in Bronzeville. Mendy. Where's Mendy? Where's Mendy when I need him? Yeah, Where? I'll get him. All right, Tanner Bob, now look. I want you to shut up. I want you to get to Mendy. Let's tell Mendy to go see Rosen and buy a newspaper. Let's... I want him taken care of. Let's... Shut up, girl! Oh, you don't know. Leave me alone. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna hit him. Tannenbaum, what are you hanging around here for? Get out of here. Get Mendy. I want that Rosen killed. The judge. The judge. Right. Get the judge on our payroll. The judge? Yeah, the judge. judge. But it's seven o'clock. Where am I gonna get a hold of him now? All right, all right.
Get out of here. Garah, whoever else is talking, I don't care who. I want him out of the way. Just calm down, huh? Lep, do you have any idea what you just did? Everyone in this room. Robin, Tenenbaum, Hesh, and Skinny, every one of them. You never did that before. I was the only one that knew. Every one of those guys can corroborate the hit. They wouldn't dare. Ah, uh, good morning, Mr. Rosen. And a good morning to you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rosen, here's your papers. Nice morning. Thank you. Morning, Mr. and Mrs. North and South America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. This is Walter Winchell. Half an hour ago, while most of you still slept, our city already incredulous at the news of last week's release on bail of labor and narcotics racketeer and rumored mastermind of the so-called Brooklyn Murder Corporation, Louis Lepke, was further outraged by the cold-blooded murder of law-abiding storekeeper Joseph Rosen. When will law enforcement agencies bring him to justice? Come home now, darling. Please, twice a widow in one lifetime is too much. Bernice, leave him. He is an evil man. I only know the part of him that lives with me and David, here in these rooms. It's not the man they're talking about. How can you live with one half of a man and pretend the rest doesn't exist? Why not? I'm not kidding myself. I'm not trying to defend him. But if there's any good in him, that's the part I've got. It's a lot more than I had before, believe me. My daughter is a whore, that's what. She is bought by the jewelry, the furs, the presents. You're a whore, a filthy whore. Papa, I wish I was. I wish I was a whore, then I could walk out of here with you. But I can't. I just can't leave him, Papa. I love him. I think we should send David to a school out of town. Maybe Miami, yes, Miami. He loves the beach so much. What good will that do? Well, at least he won't be around to hear all the dirt that they're heaping on me now. Bernice, I want you to go, too. But you're staying here, aren't you? Why should we leave and you stay? We can afford to go anywhere in the world, all together, Lou. You'll be safe there, Bernice. I've always taken good care of you, and I, and I always will. But I cannot take care of my business when I'm far away. So that's the way it's going to be. How can you want to stay here? You can't even pick up the phone without hearing a tap on the line. What kind of life is it? My lawyers will protect me, don't worry. It's not the legal thing I'm worried about. 
Lou, don't make us go. I know we'll never be the same again if we're separated. Oh, not from you two. Oh, I got a headache. I'm gonna get Lou, listen this. to me. I want to know. Lou, tell me, why can't we all go away together? What is it that keeps you here that you love so much that you need more than your own family? Will you stop yelling? You're gonna wake David. I don't care who hears, as long as you do. Lou, I just want you alive and with us. I don't care about anything else. Now, will you stop it? Don't argue with me. I'm not leaving. This is the one. Oh, gross. For yep. God's sake. Is that the boss? Must be. He's early. Boss, is that you? Angelo. Bastards, they stole my dope. Lefty, you gotta disappear. What? Lefty, you wanna wind up like these poor bastards? It's more than a whops. It's Hoover, it's Winchell's publicity, it's the whole picture. Don't you see, Lefty? Some second rate hood is gonna come after you just to get the cops off of his own back. You gotta take a powder. I'm not going on the land. Come on. Al Furstenberg, our projectionist. This is Mr. Joe Himes. Can I show you the room? You better.
Figaro, why do you think I'm on the lam, huh? Well, I stay out of jail. Well, what do you call this place? Well, it's better than jail. What am I gonna do here? You can see movies. Free. <laughs> Everything all right? Go right on in. What's shown today, baby? Ah, get on. Who's it? Oh, he's our new button. Kid Twist Relis. He takes care of the projectionist, whether they like it or not. He's the guy that got us this dump. Yeah, I hope you're pleased, Mr. Lipke. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, it's all right. Uh, we could do with better pictures. Maybe you've got a love story or something, right? Instead of this gangster shit. Okay, thank you. Well, sit down, Relis, sit down. Sure, this place is safe. Sure, I checked it out. Two tickets, please. I'm sorry, we're all sold out. Sold out? What do you mean sold out? We just... We're sold out. Listen, lady, I just saw three guys go in. What's going on out here? on me when I was on the outside. Nobody's gonna do while I'm on the land. It's Dewey. He's pressing the boys. And he's put a reward out for you, boss. It's all over town. Heavy Jake has got to get a picture hanging in his kitchen. 25 grand. Is that all he thinks I'm worth? Yeah, you saved his life once, too. 
I hate to tell you, boss, but that stupid Hoover's only putting up 5,000. Well, that's all he can afford. A nickel a stickle. Five grand. Now well, I guess he wants a piece of me. Yeah, what piece left? My putts, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it away, boss. It's all right. I like it. Thank you. My pleasure. Don't you miss your wife? You know I do. Do I look a little something like her? Nothing. How long's it been since you've seen her? Too long. Goddamned hot. You stop acting like a dirty tramp. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. North and South America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. On this sizzling July 10th, 1939, the race to bring hunted racketeer fugitive Louis Lipsky Buchalter to the hands of justice is keeping our city of New York busy. The little old ladies have discovered a new pastime, searching for Lipsky in every dark corner of every attic and cellar, uptown and downtown. The phone calls pile up at police headquarters. At this hour, they have leads on a bearded Lipsky, a bald Lipsky, a mustachioed Lepke, even a Lepke with horns, has been seen. But the real rivals in this historic contest between good and evil are the men of Hoover's FBI, who want him on narcotics charges, and the New York State prosecutor, Tom Dewey, who has announced he can put him away for 500 years. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, what is it? It's urgent. All right, get out of here.
Well, what is it? The syndicate wants to see me. Hey, you're not going. You know the rules. I gotta show up. There's one thing I want to do before I go there. I want to see Bernice and the boy. No, but Lep, you can't. I want to see Bernice and the boy. Today. <laughs> This way, Bernice. Big you got, David. You'll be as big as me pretty soon. Taking good care of your mother? Yeah. Lou, hmm? what's going to happen to you? Oh, nothing. Everything's going to be fine. Just the way it used to be. Believe me, just the way it used to be. Come on, cheer up, will you? That's it. Get out of here! 
If I was a wop, you wouldn't frisk me. Hey, Mario, que fai? What are you doing frisking my friend? Come on in, Judge. Come on in. Come on, sit down. Have some pasta. How much pasta do you want? I don't want no pasta. This is a switch, the judge being judged. Nice to see you, Lepke. You mean alive, don't you? All right, what do you got in mind? What do you want? Ever since you've been on the lam, business has been bad. So what's the verdict, huh? What are you gonna do, pour some cement and drop me in a river? <laughs> <laughs> we are friends, and we respect you. And we want to protect you. But in return, you have to protect us, too. <laughs> And how can I protect you? You got a choice. You either give yourself up to the DA, or you give yourself up to the Federals. It's up to you. I don't want to elect Dewey, so I'm going to take the Feds. I think you made a good choice, Lewis. Come on. Let's have some vino. I'm gonna miss you, Lewis. Like you miss Kara? You're a liar, Lucky. Nothing but a goddamn liar. Go ahead, kill me. Yes, kill you. I should. But the organization needs you. They need you in stir to get the heat off. You're gonna die in a jail, Lewis. Nice and slow. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm really gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna need somebody to make a deal with the feds. Who's gonna stand for me? The organization's already taken care of that. Right, Albert? I talked to Walter Winchell. He's close to Hoover. He says he can make a deal for you. Mr. Bookholder, Mr. Winchell. I think he's got good news for you. Uh, great Walter Winchell, huh? Voice of the 20th century. Hey, I'll uh, best cognac for Mr. Winchell over here, huh? I figured you'd be taller. Why don't we uh, drink to that deal you made, okay? It's set for tomorrow. Dewey doesn't touch me, right? Well, Hoover gave his word he won't turn you over to New York. How many years? Twelve, at the most. Mm-hmm. 
you're trembling. Come and sit down. Spend the night with me, please. Lou, I would have... I would have done anything to have a life with you. But you shut me out. We haven't been together for two years. I just can't understand that. I don't want to say goodbye this way. Then go. And just go. Mr. Hoover, this is Lepke. Twelve years. No New York rap. That's what we agreed. That'll be up to the judge. Well, what are we waiting for? The sooner I get there, the sooner I get out. Please rise for sentencing. And so that the record is clear, I wish to state that the defendant, Louis Bookalter, in addition to his sentence of 12 years for conspiracy to violate the narcotics law, will serve an additional two years on the antitrust indictments. At the completion of those 14 years, he will be removed from Leavenworth Penitentiary and turned over to the state of New York for further prosecution. This court is adjourned. He'll be in prison for the rest of his life. Maybe that's for the best. Don't look at me like that, Bobby. When he was with me, I shut my eyes to the truth. I never tried to change him when it might have been possible. Nothing could ever change, Lou. I'll never know, will I? Will you get that for me? I don't want to talk to anyone. Hello. No, I'm sorry, she can't come to the phone. This is Robert Keane speaking. You can tell me. What is it, Bobby? What's the matter? That was the district attorney's office. They released him from Leavenworth and turned him over to New York. I expected it. Now they'll charge him with murder. Brellis with his goddamn big mouth. He's been talking all over town. Brellis. Hey, Brellis, huh? What are you worried about him for? He's gonna take a leap. He's dead already. Nobody's got anything on me. Nobody. Well, they must have something, Louis. He wouldn't be here. <sighs> about a canary or something. They can't pin anything on me. I'm gonna get out of here. There's Ali Tenenbaum, and there's also Max Rubin. Max Rubin? You're telling me Max Rubin, my Max? You're gonna tell me Max Rubin's gonna go stool on me? You're crazy. You're nuts, not my Max, never. Sorry, Louis. He's already told him. He's, he's gonna testify in court to everything he knows. Has, has everybody gone crazy out there? What's going on? They're trying to save their own skins, Louis. You know, things have changed since you've been away. Even politicians can't be bought anymore.
How old is Max? 52. That's a ripe old age. We're gonna kill you. We're gonna protect you. We're gonna take you on a vacation. So you'll be healthy for the gods. <laughs> Come on. Mr. Tannenbaum, on that Friday, in Lepke's office, what did he say? What were his exact words to you? Tell me, what were his exact words? Can't hear you. Speak up. Speak. He said, I want Rosen hit. I want that son of a bitch dead. Uh, order. Now tell us, Mr. Tannenbaum, who else was there that could have heard what you just said? Like I said, Gura Shapiro was there. Uh, Big Hesh, Skinny, all of them dead now. Who else? Mr. Rubin was there. He's dead too. Thank you, Mr. Tannenbaum. That'll be all. The witness may be excused. can't do anything without a second witness. Is this the last witness for the prosecution, Mr. Dewey? No, Your Honor, we have one more witness uh, I'd like to call with your permission. Well, let's proceed. I'd like to call Mr. Max Rubin. Well, Mr. Dewey, are you calling spirits to our courtroom? Your Honor, Mr. Dewey is mocking the court. Rubin was shot in Brooklyn last month. Everybody seems to know that. He was shot in the head and died. Max Rubin did not die, Mr. Lepke. In that case, we would like to see your witness. Would you bring in Mr. Rubin, please? Mr. Rubin, please. Clerk, please swear the witness in. Place your right hand on the Bible, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help your God? I do. Mr. Dewey, you may proceed. Now, Mr. Rubin, we don't want to keep you now. Just take your time and tell the court, if you will, please. Were you there when Lepke Buckhalter gave the order to kill Joe Rosen? Speak up now. We can't hear you. Yes. Hello, Councillor. Come on in. One a piece. The uh, the warden gave me special permission to see you, Lewis. We've been turned down. Yeah, I know. This is a good steak, I tell you. And that son of a bitch, Dewey. I should have let Dutch Schultz kill him. I, me, I saved his life. Oh. You sure we can't buy him? Lewis, somehow I... I just feel I failed you, my friend. 
Why, you gave me two extra years, didn't you? I just want to tell you, for niece and your son, I'll take good care of them for you. Yeah, I know that. Thanks. You sure you won't have a piece? Mr. Byrne! Sorry, sir. It's barber time. Sorry, boss, if I could get my hand on those canaries, they'd do more than sing. Ain't this the Is my shepherd I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He guideth me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. North and South America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. This is Walter Winchell with the late news. Most Americans today are concerned with the war in the Pacific against Japan. But, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to report to you this evening on an event of major significance on the domestic scene, one which many Americans believed would never happen. Night, March 4th, Saturday night. The lights were on in the death chamber of Sing Sing Prison referred to as the dance hall by those in the know. At 11.30 p.m., Louis Bacalta, better known to you as Lepke, and two of his henchmen, Mindy Weiss and Joe Capone, 
were electrocuted for the murder of Joseph Rosen. Lepke is the first of the gang lords of the so-called syndicate to be executed. To me, it represents a giant step forward in our war against the criminals, mobsters, and punks who defile our great and good land.